and I'm here and I'm lucky enough to have ran into uh, Stephen Fox. We've known each other for a long time. And sure, sure time, have. First time we got together in the same spot. Uh, Stephen works for a branch of the federal government uh, at, at a senior level in security, and uh, we can't disclose who, but we can talk a little bit about the challenges. Uh, Stephen was uh, one of the featured speakers at the Executive Summit down here in Vegas. And what was your talk on, Stephen? It was uh, titled, Bring Your Own Disappointment. Basically, challenges around BYOD and uh, how a lot of organizations are putting the devices ahead, out of, ahead of their actual business plan for utilizing them. So we talked about some ways to launch a BYOD initiative appropriately to account for the business case in order to even make sense of the investment. Okay, so, so where do you start when you're talking about BYOD? Well, number one, why should you even do it? What, what, why does it matter? Are you just trying to make your employees happy or do you actually have a business case that justifies not just the capital expense that you might be saving, but also the operational expense of the security you need to build around it? Think about the fact that as an employee, you're going to be bringing your own phone in there. It's got its own software. Now you're using it for work. So now you need only need, you not only have to worry about your personal programs on there and your games, but you also need to worry about well, what, what, what does my employer want me to do with this device? And trying to balance the enhanced security needs of your employer against your personal needs for that device. So uh, you know, obviously uh, there's a, there's a, a, a cost factor in there and savings to organizations for doing BYOD. Uh, one of the biggest arguments aside from that that I've heard is that you just can't stop employees from using their own devices anyway. Uh, well, interestingly, in my organization, we launched a pilot which got dinged because we had a poor sample. So we had over 200 individuals that were part of our pilot sample but it wasn't a representative sample. When the audit department went out and looked at our organization, most of our employees didn't even want to do BYOD. They wanted to keep their personal devices totally separate from what the government agency did. So there was a mismatch between what this pilot said and what the representative sample that the audit department put together said. Now, do you think do you think a factor that uh, uh, that that these employees work for a federal agency and they perhaps have a little higher level of security awareness uh, was a factor in that, or do you think that you'd see well, that same kind of attitude? The, the, the security sector? requirements are federal are very different for private. There are certain, especially in my agency, uh, there's a lot of sensitive information. The data flow might be confidential. And you might have greater controls that the employee may, be, may feel comfortable having on their Android, for example. I mean, think about it. If you have an iOS or a Blackberry, you might feel reasonably secure. Yep, I can handle this confidential data. If you have an Android, you might think twice. Because you know, as a security person, this device is more vulnerable. All of a sudden, your employer says, I want you to store X number of records. Oh, by the way, it's really confidential. If, if it's breached, it's going to cost us embarrassment. What do you do? You say no. It's like, I don't want that responsibility. So what, what, what direction are you guys headed right now? In your we're, right now, we're looking at reevaluating our sample and really asking ourselves, is it really what we want to do? Is BYOD important enough for us in terms of making our employees quote unquote happy? Or should we not do it in order to protect the assets of the U.S. citizens that we protect? Okay, and so in part of this process and everything else you do at the level that you're at, which is very senior in your agency, uh, you uh, are, are the person who's on the front line communicating security upstream to, uh, to the most senior executive. Exactly, and that can be a real challenge. Among my peers, I can talk bits and bytes. I can talk about controls at the implementation level. I can talk about how this network interfaces with a, with a mobile device. Well, at the executive level, they're busy dealing with strategy. They're busy de dealing with communications with other agencies, which is a very political process. So we, we as more operational slash strategy that, that uh, intersection, we need to be able to translate our operational language into str strategic terms that matter, that connect with what the executives care about. 
And that is a huge challenge for people that are used to talking operationally. Sure. So in the in the private sector, we look at uh, you know how can we show security as an enabler for the business, uh, and how can it you know help uh, focus on what the business's objectives are. But that's kind of a different argument in the in the government scene. Well, it's just different objectives. You're, you're, to, for for me, it boils down to what does the agents care about, what data you're really protecting, and what do your executive allies care about. And I use allies as a very strong term because, especially in the political environment of the government, and not so differently from private sector, you need to find out what executives do you solve problems for. So you start off with problems. So data leads to some challenges associated with that data. What problem are you solving for that executive? And then communicate to that executive saying, hey, I solved this problem. I've helped you. I need your help to communicate with your colleagues. So at my agency, I have an ally in the executive branch that helps me customize my message. His background is also in security engineering. He's got all the certs, he has all the experience, but he moved up. He was able to cross that threshold into, le into leadership. So he knows how to talk to each branch. So with that ally, I'm able to translate my message of controls and operational language into language that executives can actually identify with and understand. And that's that's the, the basically the real challenge for uh, the CISO today. Yes. The, the new CISO is really turning into a marketing officer. No longer can a CISO rely on his or her technical knowledge and maybe a little bit of, of political savvy. They need to know how to market. They need to know how to sell. And it isn't just being a show for your company. It's having the insight to say, well, I have this problem with my company. What if I have other partners and other organizations, either private or, or government, that I can draw from and pull in allies from those organizations to address the larger issue that's facing the organization. Stephen Fox, thank you very much for taking the time out. Really nice to see you. Enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you very much.